Hi everyone, this is Ms. Romani. This lesson will serve as an introduction to our unit on animal anatomy and physiology and introduce us to the various tissues and organ systems that make up the human body. And so let's start with a fundamental concept in biology, and that is the direct relationship between the structure of a body part and the way that it functions. So when we study the human body, it is important to study both its anatomy and its physiology so that we can relate the form of the structures we are studying to their function. And that is because while anatomy is a scientific study of the body's structures, what they look like and their location in an organism, physiology is all about the function of those body parts, how they work to keep us alive. And as you know, biology is a study of life. And since life is such a broad topic, Scientists tend to break it down into several different levels of organization to make it easier to study. These levels start from the smallest building blocks of life and work up to the largest and most broad category. The atom is the smallest and most fundamental unit of matter. It consists of a nucleus surrounded by electrons. And atoms form molecules. A molecule is a chemical structure consisting of at least two atoms held together by one or more chemical bonds. And many molecules that are biologically important are macromolecules. That is, large molecules that are typically formed by polymerization, a process by which a large molecule is made by combining smaller units called monomers. An example of a macromolecule is proteins. A protein is a polymer of hundreds of amino acids bonded together. And macromolecules make up organelles, which are found within cells, which are the basic unit of life. Now, multicellular organisms like humans are made up of many cells, and the cells in complex multicellular organisms are organized into tissues. These are groups of similar cells that work together to perform a specific task. And then organs are structures made up of two or more tissues organized to carry out a particular function. And groups of organs with related functions make up the different organ systems. And finally, organ systems work together to form an entire organism. And so let's start by taking a look at animal tissues, a group of cells that have similar structure and act together to perform a specific function. Humans and other large multicellular animals are made up of four basic tissue types, connective tissue, epithelial tissue, muscle tissue, and nervous tissue. So let's explore each of them one at a time. And let's start with epithelial tissue. Now, when you think of epithelial tissue, think of skin, because our skin is made up of epithelial tissue. But not just our skin. Our epithelial tissue lines the cavities of our body and covers the surface of not just our entire body, but also the surface of our vessels and our organs. They are made up of tightly packed cells, which allows them to provide several important functions, like protection from, say, pathogens or the sun. It also allows for secretion, like sweat or oils, and absorption, like the absorption of nutrients that happens in the small intestine, or the absorption of gases that happens at the lungs. Another tissue is muscle tissue, and muscle tissue is responsible for movement both inside and outside the body. Muscle tissues have the ability to contract and get shorter, and then to relax and return to the original size, which is how they can produce movement within the body, and they can produce movement off the body itself. There are three types of muscle tissue, skeletal, smooth, and cardiac. Skeletal muscle is the type of muscle tissue that is under voluntary control. That is, we can make a conscious decision to move that muscle. For example, when you raise your hand in class, that movement is controlled by muscle that you voluntarily engaged. Both smooth and cardiac muscles are involuntary muscles, which means that you don't have to think about them in order for them to move. For example, smooth muscle make up our digestive tract. When you sit in class and your tummy grumbles, that grumbling sound is the result of peristalsis. Involuntary rhythmic contractions of the smooth muscles on the stomach and intestines that move food and waste. And of course, that's not under voluntary control. You did not decide for that to happen. 
cardiac muscle is found only in the heart. It has these connections between cells called intercalated discs, which allow the cardiac muscle cells to bond and communicate with each other so that they can contract in a wave-like pattern that allows the heart to pump. Skeletal and cardiac muscles are called striated muscle because these muscles have regular repeated stripes that can be seen under the microscope. Nerve tissue is found in our brains, spinal cords, and throughout our bodies as nerves. Many nerve tissues are made out of nerve cells called neurons. These are cells that are specialized for carrying electrochemical signals. They allow our brains to communicate with the rest of our body and for our bodies to communicate information to the brain. Connective tissue is made up of many different and varied cells that provide a variety of functions such as support, structure, defense, protection, they also help with the transport of materials and to bind things together within our body. Connective tissue cells are often associated with fibers like collagen and also elastic fibers. These cells of connective tissue are separated by a ground substance made up of water, fluids, and a mix of proteins called matrix. There are six main types of connective tissue. There is loose connective tissue. It is composed of collagen and elastic fibers, and it is found in and around blood vessels and organs. Next, we have fibrous connective tissue. They have a large amount of collagen and few cells. They are found in tendons and ligaments, mostly. Adipose connective tissue is basically body fat and is used for insulation and to help store energy. Cartilage is also a connective tissue. Cartilage is found at the end of our bones and it's also found in our nose and in our ears. And so if you've ever touched the tip of your nose or tried to bend the top of your ears, you know that cartilage is strong but flexible. And our bones are also considered a type of connective tissue. And finally, our blood is also considered a connective tissue. And it is special because the cells in it are separated by fluid. So as you can see, connective tissues are extremely varied in both structure and function. They help attach body parts together, like attaching muscles to the bones. They help protect organs and cushion them. They transport materials and immune cells throughout the body. And they store fat. So an organ can be described or defined as a structure that is made up of two or more tissues working together on a larger scale to do a specific job within an animal's body. Examples of organs are, for example, the stomach, the brain, the heart, or the lungs. And organs are grouped into organ systems. Organ systems are teams of organs that work together to carry a particular function for the organism. For example, the heart and the blood vessels make up the circulatory system. They work together to circulate the blood, bringing oxygen and nutrients to cells throughout the body and carrying away carbon dioxide, gas, and metabolic wastes. So to help us understand how our bodies work, it helps us to divide them into these organ systems. And that's what we're going to do next. We're going to take a moment to briefly explore the 10 major systems that are responsible for the body's function. Now keep in mind that this is just a quick introduction to the different body systems. Some of these we will explore in a lot more detail in other lessons. And let's start with the muscular system, which of course is made up of muscle tissue, but also connective tissue like tendons and ligaments. And the role of the muscular system is to allow for movement of the different body parts. Of course, this movement cannot happen without a framework onto which to anchor those muscles. And that framework is made up of the bones that make up the skeletal system. These bones hold the body together, give the body its shape, and protect vulnerable organs. The adult skeletal system is composed of 206 bones. There are actually more bones when we are born, but many fuse together by adulthood. And besides bones, the skeletal system includes cartilage and ligaments, which provide attachment points to the muscles of the muscular system. The circulatory system, which is also sometimes called the cardiovascular system, is composed of a network of vessels that move blood throughout the body. 
The blood can transport nutrients, gases, waste, and important molecules like, say, hormones, and the heart is the pump that keeps the blood moving throughout the body. The circulatory system also plays a role in regulating our body temperature by redirecting blood to different parts of our body depending on whether or not we are hot or cold. The nervous system is a communication network of nerves that the body uses to transmit information and coordinate bodily functions. Its main component is the brain, the place where sensor information is processed, where memories are kept, where intellectual activity happens, and where we control all our body processes. It is also made up of the spinal cord and nerves that connect the brain to the rest of the body. The lymphatic system is a collection of lymph nodes, glands, and vessels that help regulate our body's defenses against invaders. In other words, our immune system. The second function of the lymphatic system is completely different, though. It is the absorption and transport of fats and fat-soluble vitamins from the digestive system. The respiratory system is a group of passageway and organs that help us extract oxygen from the air that we breathe and to get rid of carbon dioxide that we produce as a waste product. The endocrine system is a series of glands that help us produce and secrete hormones that then help regulate our body processes. The digestive system is a series of hollow organs that are collectively called the alimentary canal and accessory organs that provide digestive juices. And the main job of the digestive system is to break down food nutrients into their smallest monomers so that they can be absorbed into the body and be used for energy and to build body parts. We cannot overlook a body system that helps us regulate the removal of waste from our body. This system is the excretory system, or sometimes called the urinary system. The main components are the kidneys, which filter our blood and produce urine, and the bladder, which store that urine until we're ready to expel it as, well, pee. And finally, the reproductive system, the system responsible for creating life through sexual reproduction. The primary organs involved differs between the sexes, with ovaries, fallopian tubes, a uterus, and a vagina found only in females, and testes and a sperm channel found in males. These organs produce the male and female gametes, the sperm and the ovum, and after fertilization, the female organs are responsible for pregnancy and birth. So we just described organ systems as teams of organs that work together to perform vital functions in the body. But humans are complicated organisms, and one thing to keep in mind is that organ systems do not work in isolation. Organ systems will also work together to perform vital body functions. For example, if you wanted to move your arm up and down, you would of course use the arm muscles that are part of your muscular system, but your muscles alone could not lift your arm. They need to be attached to the arm bones and shoulder joints of your skeletal system. Also, you would need your nervous system to send messages to move your arm from your brain to your arm muscles. And of course those muscles cannot perform any movement without energy, so they need a constant blood supply to keep them full of the nutrients and oxygen that they need to obtain energy. Now during this unit we will explore in a lot more detail three of the organ systems we looked at today. The circulatory system, the respiratory system, and digestive system. But that's it for now, so I will talk to you soon. Bye.